Atlas Break is a very small, very portable, very compact two-player card game. It is basically a love child of Magic the Gathering and I don't know whichever deck building game comes to mind. It has this very strong Magic the Gathering idea that it's a duel, you are using effects to protect yourself and to attack the opponent. When the life points go down to zero, you win in this game instead of life points, they call them influence, but the idea is the same. And so you start with 50 influence and you use these cards to give track of that. You will use game effects to attack the opponent. Again, if the opponent goes down to zero before you do, you win the game. So you have the dueling idea that is very reminiscent of Magic the Gathering, but you do this now by selecting a, game, a deck before the game starts, like in Magic the Gathering, but by building a deck as the game progresses. Both players start with an identical deck of 10 cards, uh, and they're very basic. You have 8 cards that will simply give you 1 money, 1 point of currency, and 2 cards uh, that are monsters that will give 1 point of damage. They can be used to inflict 1 point of damage on an opponent or on other targets. You shuffle your deck, you get a hand of five cards, and then well, both players will do that, and then the game is ready to start, well, after you place a couple of other cards out there. Again, talking about the, the character that you will control, the game comes with four such characters, with four champions, they have unique abilities, and after you choose one, again, you place it under these two cards that you will move around to indicate the changing amount of life. Again, it's called influence that the character has. You have here, uh, and the general idea is this. Uh, your turn is going to be very fluid, uh, like you can find in a lot of deck building games. Which is, when it's your turn, you reveal your cards and you play your cards in any order that you want, resolving any effects that is printed in any order that you want. You don't have to resolve everything. They're just resources you spend any way you want. Money, use it to buy cards, uh, damage, use it to inflict damage. If you acquire a card that uh, has a green number there, it's a healing effect, you use it to heal yourself. What is the general idea? Uh, what are the things that you can do here? You can spend money from your cards to buy more money. When you acquire a card, this is the cost. The top right corner is the cost. And this is the effect. So you have a pile of gold units, they're all the same, so there are a lot that can be bought. Again, reminding me of the money cards in Dominion. When you buy a card you place in your discard pile, it will become available when you reshuffle your discard pile and make it into your new deck. You have bounties. Bounties are cards that you shuffle into a deck, you keep them face up. These are different from one another, but only the top one is available. To acquire a bounty, you need to defeat it with damage points, not by buying it. So, for example, if I can master four damage points, I can defeat that one, and I simply immediately receive the effect indicated there. Wasting a card means it is discarded out of the game. Here, if I win against this bounty, then it becomes a two barrier, it goes into my discard pile, so that means it will protect me from two points of damage. This one will give me money right away, so basically it's a way of converting uh, damage into money and so on and so forth. The bounty is a one-time advantage. It's you win, resolve the effect. Again, some may go into your deck or may go into your opponent's deck, cluttering them. They're useless bounties and the point is precisely to give them to the opponent. But still, the general idea is that resolve the effect and then you reveal the next bounty. And then you have the real heart of the game, which is the marketplace. You have a deck of cards, uh, shuffle them, five will be available. And again, same idea is that uh, the card is acquired by spending currency, by spending currency, and the cost is the top right corner. And some cards, uh, after you buy them, go into your pile, come back into your hands, some cards will allow you to heal yourself. 
Some cards will give you effects such as inflicting damage on a bounty or directly on the opponent, possibly other effects. Different kinds of effects, like the one that you see here, drawing extra cards. And then barriers. Again, this is the cost of the barrier. And when you draw a barrier, it goes in front of you, it protects you from that much damage. If there's extra damage, it goes through, it applies to you, and then the card goes in your discard pile, so it'll come back to you later. And then I'll just, I'm just going to give you a look. Feel free to pause so you get a sense of the kind of effects. But basically, there is some deck manipulation, and then a lot of healing, a lot of damage. There's Diana Prince. There is a lot of damage, a lot of money, a lot of healing. Those are basically the three main things. It is, in a sense, the, the, a very minimalistic um, deck builder. There are deck builders by now that do a lot of different things. Here is just about get money, to buy more cards, heal, and do and do damage. Thinking of the game again as a deck building dual game. I can't imagine a game that would be more minimalistic. Again, this is one of those whose effect is to clutter the deck of the opponent. Game of Bones. Yeah, you have, between that and Diana Prince and other things, you have a lot of pop references. This is a pretty interesting synergistic one. Also, this is an opportunity for you to look at the cards. Look at the amount of unique art. It's really impressive, really high quality. And just so many unique pieces of art. You, I honestly did not expect such high production values from the point of view of the art, especially uh, in a game from an independent studio. This kind of art and this amount of art is usually what you find in the major leagues. So, this is basically Atlas Break. Play your cards to do damage on the opponent, buy cards, buy money, defeat the bounties, but again, mainly, do damage on the opponent, heal yourself, because ultimately, victory is defeating the opponent by bringing them down to zero influence, which really is life points. It just looks and feels like life points. But it's called Influence in the game. Atlas Break has enjoyable art, as I said, but also has very enjoyable gameplay. However, there is something about it. Everything is dutifully executed. It's almost like you're eating a dish that is pretty good, but you're just missing a pinch of something to make it special. This is a game that I think could have been a blast and like a huge success in 2010 when the uh, deck building genre was still fairly new. But then even then you had things that were more experimental, there was, there was more meat on the grill. Uh, you had Nightfall with a lot of interesting uh, combo effects and things like that. It is a deck building game which is extremely simple, extremely linear, and it feels like an introduction to deck building. In that sense, it has an audience. Actually, this is the first deck building game that I played with my daughter Louisa, who is now eight, and she had no problem whatsoever understanding the rules, understanding the mechanisms. She was confused for like five seconds in the beginning. What do you mean I put it in my discard pile? But after that, she got into it and she has been asking me to play it over and over again. So it's a great introduction to uh, the deck building genre if you're playing it, especially with maybe very casual players. So this is a season of the holidays and yeah, maybe it's not this year, 2020, it's not so much about parents, uh, relatives that are coming to visit and they don't play games, so you're looking for very casual games. Still. One day you will have visiting relatives that are not so much into games, but you want to play simple games with them. So this is a game that you can uh, play with them, you can play with children. However, again, in its simplicity, in its incredibly linear, straightforward um, identity, you also have a little bit of limitation if indeed you are somewhat of a more committed player and you have been accustomed to games that around the deck building engine simply have more stuff. Nightfall, Thunderstone, there are just so many games that 
do a lot more things, give you more options, give you more strategies rather than I'm gonna add to your damage, I'm gonna reduce my damage, and I'm gonna draw some extra cards. It just feels a little too bland, a little too linear by the standards of today's gaming um, standards. The stands of the game is standard. Did I say that? I think I did say that. So I said it. Now, another thing that you have here is healing. There's just a little too much healing. And that creates an, a problem in terms of the of pacing because if both players uh, uh, start acquiring healing, the game gets to a little bit of a standstill. Then you have to create some really mighty devastating combos and, and wait for that opening where I can give those 20 points of damage right after you played your heal 7 and so you're not gonna get that in your deck for a while. So it can drag because of that, it can feel a little too long uh, and if only one player collects healing then the player is gonna win. So on the plus side, advantage is that that thick deck of of market cards that you can buy is not gonna is not gonna be too thin if you remove some of those cards. The game is customizable in that sense. You can uh, remove cards and you still have enough to play. So if you think that that's a problem, and I found that to be uh, something that does weaken the experience, then you can simply remove the heal cards or some of them from the deck. There's also a character that heals every time, super annoying, and again, you don't have to use that character. You may have to do a little bit of deck management uh, before the game starts if you think that the game doesn't really suit your needs, but that's again a good thing is that um, the, the game can be adapted, tweaked easily. If it's too long, you reduce the number of, of, of influence points. If you want to play all day, then uh, increase the number of uh, of uh, influence points and reduce the damage cards. You can do whatever you want with it. So there is strength in the fact that the game is malleable and whatever uh, shortcomings you may see, it, I believe most of them can be addressed by altering the composition of the market deck and the bounties. However, again, in general, the point is it doesn't have quite enough flavor to be the kind of game that I would be excited to play with an adult committed gamer, but definitely is a game that has a position, has a place in a player's collection. It does in mine, at least for as long as my 8-year-old is super excited about it. The 10-year-old hasn't tried it yet, I think she will enjoy it also, but I see it mainly as an introduction to deck building and a game that you play with casual gamers. For a game night with adult friends, uh, maybe it's a little too light, it's a little too bland. It just, it just lacks that little bit, that pinch of something special, unique that really would make it great.